Welcome again to our channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Dr. Kainde Elisha speaking here, founder of MP Certification Academy. Are you in school and struggling with psychopharmacology? Well, you're in the right place. Because guess what? The most popular resource that they use in schools, which is Tall Psychopharmacology, is what I'm about to break down for you. I really hope you learn from it. And most importantly, I hope I'll be able to help and support you better so you don't struggle anymore in farm. Now, once you're done with school, please don't forget to come back to this channel or go to our website www.npcertificationacademy.com sign up for your board exam so that we can help you achieve your goal don't forget if you don't pass your board exam it's like not going to school at all so we're going to get you through we have 99.9% .9 pass rate you can come join the circle of exam success and after you pass your board exam guess what we also have that expert group where we can uh, you know help guide you further to help propel you, to help guide you to achieve your best goal. Listen, you have to be in the right network to be able to make it. A lot of students are graduating. A lot of, you know, people are passing their boards. So you want to be in the right circle so that we can help you and support you. In addition to that, when you are working, if you feel, you feel stranded, you throw your cases in and then we help you out. And that is part of what we do. That's part of teamwork. That's collaboration right there. So why don't you sign up? www.npcertificationacademy.com and if you pass your board exam already please visit www.confidentprescriber.com to sign up now i'll be showing that on the slide in just a minute as we get started now we start psychopharmacology chapter 1 to 13 thank you so psychopharmacology when we talk about psychopharmacology what is it about we are talking about drugs that work with the brain we're talking about drugs that we use in the mentally ill but listen we just don't begin prescribing. We don't begin with, you know, we just, just, we just don't start farming anyhow. We have to begin, it's a process, right? We have to, step one is, do you understand the pharmacokinetics, dynamics, and genomics? Do you understand the drug-drug interaction? Do you understand the food-drug interaction, the drug-disease interaction? Do you know the side effect and how to approach it? And then this kind of work its way down before we even ever get to prescription, uh, prescribing it. So what am I trying to say is, you have to take it step by step, slow it down. If you don't know your pharmacokinetics and dynamics, this may be a little bit tough for you too, but it will still kind of break it down a little bit for you. So you may need to go back to the basics, refresh that uh, foundation or come to us at NP Certification Academy and we're going to help you out. So what exactly is installed psychopharmacology? Before we get started, I want to introduce our courses again. We offer PMHMP, AAMP, and ANCC. We offer FMP, AGMP, AGAC, MP, and NCLEX exam review with 99.9% .9 pass rate. Dr. Kainde Elisha speaking here, founder and CEO of MP Certification Academy. So we're now going to jump right in. The very first chapter, what is it about? It talks about chemical neurotransmission. So what exactly is, the, is it about? So when we talk about neurotransmission, what is getting, what, what does it mean when we say transmit? right to transmit is that something is helping something to communicate listen the neurons communicate using what chemical messengers called neurotransmitters so this particular chapter explains what the brain cells on how they send receive and recycle these messages so when we talk about this it also has its own little you know details that is when we talk about the cell don't forget we have what the axon we have the what the dendrites axon carries impulses away from the cell body the dendrites they act like the postman they take impulses into the cell body so a for away that is what we are talking about now in addition to that we are also talking about the presynaptic and the postsynaptic neuron the presynaptic is before the synapse. The postsynaptic is after the synapse. I'm not going to go into too much details. You want to learn more? Visit www.npcertificationacademy.com. So now, what exactly should we be learning here? The little foundation about the neuron is there. And then the major neurotransmitters also will come in play as we talk about what? The neurons. We talk about the neurotransmitters. Now, there is a lot of neurotransmitters out there, but we only talk about a little bit, like seven of them. Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, glutamate, opioid, neuropeptides, acetylcholine. 
these seven, uh, they're the main ones that we really talk about for the most part. But there is a lot more than that. But they are the ones that directly influence us the most and the most popular ones. Then, when it comes to giving psychotropics, it has an influence in one of these chemicals, one or more of these chemicals. For example, when we talk about SSRI, which, which neurotransmitter have an influence on it? It is serotonin. Serotonin, in fact, have an influence on SSRI. That is why when the tank is low, when we lack serotonin, it means we have depression. So we have to replenish the tank by giving the patient SSRI. All right. Let's now look at the kind of questions that we can likely, we're going to likely get from this chapter. It's about a patient taking SSRI. Reports no improvement in mood after one week. What is the most likely explanation for the delay in therapeutic effect? A. The SSRI immediately increases serotonin release. B. SSRI increases serotonin synthesis rapidly. C. SSRIs block reuptake, but receptor sensitivity changes take time. D. SSRI inhibits serotonin breakdown uh, enzymes. Drop your answer in the chat if you know it, or drop your answer on this YouTube session. Let's make it a little conversation. What do you think? The final answer here is going to be C. I see that many of you got it right. So why is it C then? SSRIs block serotonin receptor quickly, increasing serotonin in the synapse. However, the clinical effects are delayed due to what? Time needed for postsynaptic receptor desensitization and neuroadaptive changes. The process takes two to six weeks, explaining the delayed symptom improvement. Does it, does it now make sense why this drug will not kick in until about two to six weeks? Does that make sense? Next question or next content. The next content is chapter two. It talks about transporters, receptors, and enzymes. You know we are getting deeper down into cellular level now. So what, are, what is the focus of this chapter? According to Stoll Psychopharmacology, fifth edition, it focuses on where medications actually act, transporters reoptic, receptor signal receivers, enzymes will break down stuff, transporters will carry, aka reoptic, receptors signal receivers. Receivers, listen, receptor will receive stuff. Receivers are sitting right here. They are like your family members waiting to receive you at the airport. The synapse is most synonymous to what your airport. Airport. Now you are coming from point A and you are going to point B, right? You're going to land at the airport. That is the synapse. Your family member must be right here waiting to receive you at the airport. That is the receptor site. For them to receive you, they have to recognize you. Does it make sense now? You got to bring these things to life. That's what we do at NP Certification Academy. We bring things to life. We help you connect better. We don't read to people. We teach to people. Now look, what are the key targets here? Transporters, the CERT, the NET, and the DAT. We know what that means already. Serotonin, norepi, and dopamine. Blocked by SSRI, SNRIs, bupropion, and so on. What about the receptors? Metabo uh, metabotropic, which is the slow G, G protein, and ionotropic, which is the fast one, targeted by antipsychotics and zeolytics. We'll talk more about this in class. This is just a quick overview, but if you want to know more, sign up www.npcertificationacademy.com. And enzymes MAO and MAOB, these are just enzymes that will break down excess neurotransmitters within the cytosol. So, what is the clinical pair here? What is the main thing to hold on to? You got to understand the target because it's going to help you understand the side effect and the therapeutic profile of each medication. Let's now take a look at the question here. Why must a patient taking amitriptyline, amitriptyline happens to be what? A TCA. Why are, they gonna, why are they experiencing both improved mood and dry mouth? A, it stimulates dopamine receptors. B, it blocks both serotonin and norepinephrine re tra transporters and muscarinic receptors. C, it enhances GABA activity. D, it increases serotonin enzyme breakdown. Now, if you understand your content, if you understand the class of this drug and its mechanism, there is no way you will not get this right. Providers, drop your answers in the chat. So this is simply asking, what is the mechanism of action of, of TCA? 
Don't forget it blocks both serotonin and norepinephrine. And the muscarinic receptor, that's also a key word, listen. Amitriptyline is a tricyclic antidepressant that blocks the surge and the net, improving mood by increasing serotonin. Listen, with, with serotonin, with, with, our, with our depression, uh, we believe that serotonin is lacking as well as norepinephrine. So we can improve this by, you know what I mean, replenishing uh, that patient with a lot of, with, with some dose of TCA to kind of bring up the tank. Can you visualize that? It, it also blocks muscarinic receptors leading to what anticholinergic side effect like dry mouth like constipation and blood vision that's what we see listen anticholinergic anticholinergic effect of it that's that's very very classic of tcas with an anticholinergic everything is dry dry mouth dry eyes blood vision constipation let's now take a look at the next question at the next content the chapter, chapter three of Stall Psychopharmacology, fifth edition. Ion channels as drug target. What is it about? It talks about ion channels control electrical activity in the brain. Some drugs work by opening or blocking these channels. And sodium is blocked by mood stabilizers, cabamazepine, lamotrigine. Calcium is affected by gabapentin and pregabalin. Chloride. GABA A receptor channels affected by benzodiazepines. So, what is the clinical purpose here? Ion channel dysfunction is involved in epilepsy, bipolar disorder, uh, you know, anxiety and pain. Let us keep in mind as well. A lot of the side effects of these uh, drugs also have a little, as have a lot of influence on what key channels that they work with. Okay, we're gonna talk more about that in class. Right now, we're gonna take a little question. The question says, a patient on lamotrigine for bipolar depression shows mood instability. What mechanism best explains this effect? A, an anti-serotonin transmission. B, inhibits voltage-gated sodium channels by reducing glutamate release. C, inhibits dopamine reuptake. D, activates GABA-A receptor. We're talking about a key word of lamotrigine uh, Lamo as a key word. Bipolar depression, keyword, they show mood stability. What mechanism best explains this effect? These are all mechanisms. These are all mechanisms. When you get to Psych MP program, the, the very first exam you're going to have is going to be about chapter one, two, and three. And it's all talking about things at a cellular level. So you have to understand those mechanisms. And you can always reach out to us if you need help with this. Nurse to nurse coach at gmail.com. So now what's your answer here? He's asking for the mechanism of action of lamotrigine. And we know it's not a, they are not, it's not, it's not enhancing serotonin transmission. This is supposed to be a mood stabilizer and it can also be what anti-epileptic. And we know it's not, um, it doesn't inhibit dopamine reuptake. We know it does not, in, it does not activate GABA-A. So when you know these neurotransmitters and you can connect your dot, you'll be able to nail down B, final answer. It inhibits voltage-gated sodium channels, reducing what? Glutamate release. So, lamotrigine works by blocking voltage-sensitive sodium channels, which stabilizes neurons by reducing excess glutamate release, a contributor to mood stability in bipolar disorder, especially depressive episodes. I really hope that makes sense. Repetition, repetition, repetition is the key. Now let's talk about chapter, chapter four of Stoll Psychopharmacology, fifth edition. It talks about psychosis, schizophrenia, and neurotransmission. What is the main caption of this chapter? So first, what is psychosis? What is, you know, we have types of psychosis, right? We have schizophrenia, schizophrenic form, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type, schizoaffective disorder, depressive type, brief uh, psychotic disorder, and we also have delusional disorder. So they all have the delusion and hallucinations with loose association. The only thing is that um, they have different time. That is what it is. For example, schizophrenia in six months and above, 
schizophrenic form is still forming into schizophrenia so it's less than six months it is not schizophrenia yet until it hits anyway we can receive that lecture for another day now let's focus on what is in front of us dopamine hyperactive in mesolimbic pathway positive symptom serotonin modulates dopamine cognition glutamate excites is an excitatory neurotransmitter and NMD nmda receptor uh, hypofunction may underlie cognitive deficit what is the per what is the take home here the take home here is that targeting multiple neurotransmitters help treat what the full spectrum of schizophrenia now let's take a look at a sample question that you may likely get here now this is getting more into pathways we also have to know the pathways to listen there are four dopamine pathways mesocortical mesolimbic nigrostriatal tubular infundibular pathway let's not forget mesocortical we are taking away from normal human experience that is a negative symptom mesolimbic we are adding to normal human experience that is a positive symptom just keep that in mind i guess i just give the answer in a way anyway which dopamine pathway is responsible for positive symptoms of schizophrenia so this only proves to you that there is no strategy without content absolutely none because i gave you the content already i kind of said the answer already it's too late for me to even talk about anything again i already said it i didn't i wasn't thinking anyway we know the final answer is going to be what mesolimbic pathway because we it's a positive symptom of schizophrenia the mesolimbic dopamine pathway becomes hyperactive in schizophrenia leading to positive symptoms like hallucinations delusions in contrast mesocortical pathway contributes to what negative symptoms of and, cog uh, and cognitive uh, symptoms so at this time we're going to stop this right here and begin another video from chapter five so i hope you're going to subscribe and like share our webs our link so that we can continue to support students in school you still feel like you're struggling in psychopharmacology we're here to help we're going to break it all down for you this is nothing this is just a quick overview quick and dirty overview but i hope you're still able to take something home all right speaking is dr kende elijah founder of mp certification academy to reach us nurse to nurse coach at gmail.com or visit www.npcertificationacademy.com we're going to pick up next time from chapter five thank you